the Lord some praise. Come on, let's pray. God, we want to be where you are. Lord, we want to be people who walk in the Spirit. Lord, as we move into this new sermon series, God, we ask that you might help us to become people who move in the Spirit, love by the power of the Holy Spirit, know ourselves afresh because of what the Holy Spirit reveals. God, we pray that in our time where you are, in our time spending time in your presence, that you might position us to follow you more intently. God, be with us in this preaching moment. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all turn with me in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. We are beginning a new series on the fruits of the Spirit. We'll be journeying these next uh, four or so weeks um, through the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, and I want to make sure that we understand we're going to be in Galatians 5 all month long. There are some books of the Bible that are so dense that even though it's only one chapter, it contains multiple multitudes of realities and revelations. And Galatians chapter 5 is one of those kinds of chapters. So journey with me. I'll be in the King James Version this afternoon. Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would verse 18 but if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the law now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings and such like of the which I will tell you before as I have told you in times past they who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness, temperance, against such things there is no law. Verse 24, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the afflictions, with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another or envying one another. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. Pray with me from the title, It's Winning Season. It's Winning Season. Hallelujah. Double Love, I am excited to journey into this series on the fruits of the Spirit because I really do believe that God is positioning many of us for our winning seasons. I believe that we are currently in a season of wins. And if you've been with Double Love a little while now, you know that every now and again, God speaks prophetically over this congregation and what the Lord speaks collectively begins to manifest individually. And so I believe, Double Love, that we are in a winning season, which means not only is your church winning, but I believe because you're connected to this church, you're in a winning season. 
When you receive it, you should celebrate like Malik did because when you are connected to a place where God speaks prophetically, God never speaks to only one individual, but God's prophetic word is always for the whole. And so if you're connected to the right place, when God blesses your neighbor, God's in the neighborhood. And so God is not only going to bless the person on the left and the right of you, but Lord, the Lord is going to bless you too. It's winning season. It's winning season. We just came out of the book of Job. It was a hard season, a hard series to preach, but God required us to move through the book of Job so that when we got to winning season in September, we would have a different capacity for how to handle the winds on the backside of our Job seasons. Hallelujah. I believe the best testimony of winning season is a young lady by the name of Coco Golf. Y'all know about it. New Yorkers, we're right here in the city where this 19 year old black teenager became the winner of the U.S. Open yesterday. She's in her winning season and y'all I'm not really a tennis lover but I love it when black young women and black young men step into fields and sports that we're not always in. I love it when we have a golf moment. I love it when we have a swimming moment. I love it when we have a tennis moment because because people are always confounded by how we are able to excel beyond football, beyond basketball, beyond track and field. And y'all, I love it when our young people are the ones who are present of mind enough to understand what season they're in. Coco understood she's in a winning season. Come on, for those of you who aren't as privy to the U.S. Open, let me tell you a little bit about this young lady named Coco. This young lady named Coco used to go to the U.S. Open with her parents and watch Venus and Serena Williams play. She used to sit in the stands and study the models of possibility that were before her in the black women that were already on the tennis court. Coco Golf just four years ago competed so well that she almost won at the age of 15 or 16 years old. This young woman is so clear about her winning season that just last week a viral clip went around TikTok and Instagram and Twitter with her challenging the referee saying referee you're going to have to show up and mediate this thing appropriately because my opponent is acting like they don't know that I'm serving and when I'm serving they need to pay attention to my serve. This is a young woman who understood that she's in her winning season and anything that's trying to hinder her from a fair match has got to get on up out of her way and it's early in the sermon but I feel a word right there some of y'all need to declare to your situation this is my winning season and anything that's trying to keep me from a fair fight has got to get out of my way I don't mind working for it. where are my people who can say I don't mind a little work ethic I don't mind a little hard work I don't mind putting in the hours I don't mind the sweat equity but anything that's trying to keep me from a fair fight gotta go Anything that's trying to keep me from having an honest shot at what God has put before me has got to go. And I love it because Coco Golf knows that she's in her winning season. But she said yesterday in her victory match, when they presented her with the trophy, she, they said, you know what? You're a person of faith. We know that your faith guides you. And I love it. Coco said it like this. She said, yes, my faith guides me. And she says, I always pray to God that God will give me the strength for my match. She said, I don't pray pray for the outcome of my match. I pray for the strength to get through my match. <laughs> that young lady preaching already. And I just want you to know that when you're in your winning season, your prayers got to look a little different. Somebody needs to pray for some strength today because the match before you, you will win. Somebody needs to get like this young woman and understand that when it's time for you to win, anything that threatens your strength, anything that threatens your capacity anything that threatens the fairness of your fight has got to go winning season winning season another thing that this young woman said yesterday messed me up changed my whole sermon she said something like this she said I want to thank my parents never seen my father cry want to thank my coaches want to thank New York City but then she said I want to thank those of you who didn't believe in me 
She said, I want to thank those of you who when I won two matches ago, you thought that was all that I was going to do. And I want to thank those of you who when I won last match, you thought that was as far as I was going to get. She said, I want to thank those of you who did not believe in me because now here I am and this win means all the more. Beloved, winning season, I believe, is always on the backside of the fruit of the spirit known as long suffering. Let's deal with it. Bible says, let's go back. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Watch it. Against these things, there is no law. Beloved, as we move through the gifts, the, spirit, the, the, the fruit of the spirit, I want us to wrap our head around the fact that these characteristics are the fruit that you spend time in the presence of the Lord. Okay, if you're taking notes, point number one, as we frame this series this month, the characteristics of verses 22 and 23 in Galatians 5 are the evidence that you've been spending time in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Say it again. The evidence that you've been spending time in the presence of the Holy Spirit is found in verses 22 and 23 of Galatians chapter 5. What that means is, I love it that you got a real good holy dance. I love it that you can speak in tongues until the interpretation comes forth. I love it that you grew up in the church and you were church baby. I love it that you love church culture and you can quote back to me so many scriptures without even opening your Bible. I love all of that, but the fruit of the Spirit, the evidence that you've been spending time with God is that you are someone who is a person of love, joy, Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And because you spend time in the spirit, can't no law keep you from what God has for you. Fruit of the spirit. Against these things, there is no law. Okay, so why does that excite you, Pastor Gabby? It excites me that against these things there is no law because when Jesus comes in the Gospels, the reason why the Pharisees and the Sadducees can't stand him is because they feel like Jesus keeps breaking the law. But Jesus keeps saying, your law is frail. Your law is incorrect. Your law is built on some human inconsistencies. But I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly, John 10. So I got to break the law to help you live in accordance with how God the Father intended for you to live all along. Sometimes the law tries to keep you from speaking up for yourself. Sometimes the law tries to keep you from naming a thing of things. Sometimes the law tries to make you feel like you're not Christian enough if you call out the inconsistencies but when you spend time with the Holy Spirit and you produce the fruit of verse 21 and verse 22 can't no law keep you from going where God is calling you to when you walk in the Spirit. Y'all we have done such a disservice to this passage of scripture. We get so caught up 
on the earlier parts, verse 18, 19, 20, where it talks about adultery and fornication and, and drunkenness and, and strife. And, and, and y'all, we, we get so guilty because some of y'all have cheated and some of y'all get drunk all the time and some of y'all see yourself and the things that it says not to do and you get so stuck on the stuff that it says not to do that you ignore that verses 21 and 22 are a byproduct of spending time in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Do you recognize that if you would shift your gaze to verses 21 and 22, I'm sorry, verses 22 and 23, excuse me. If you would shift your gaze to verses 22 and 23, the longer you spend in the spirit, the stuff in verses 20 and 21 is going to fall away. Okay. Let me take my time here. Uh, 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 if you would just spend more time in the presence of the Holy Spirit, I promise you, as the Holy Spirit develops these new fruit, this new fruit in your life, that stuff in verse 20 and 21 is not going to be as appealing to you anymore because you're so satisfied with the fruit in verses 22 and 23. Let me make it plain. Y'all ever decided I'm going on a green smoothie cleanse? I'm eating nothing but fruits and and vegetables for two weeks. You ever decided I'm just going to change my palate for two weeks? I got to get real clean for two weeks. And when you come out of that thing, the first time you smell McDonald's, you are disgusted with yourself. You're like, did I ever eat fries? Did I, did I ever want this stuff? When, the first time you come out of a cleanse, you don't want none of that stuff because your system has experienced a new way of being. You feel lighter. You have more energy. You lose an inches on your waist you feel different about yourself and so now when you go to a fast food restaurant with your boys and they like yo you want a big mac you like a big mac i just spent two weeks on a green smoothie cleanse i don't want no big mac that's gonna reverse all the progress i just made watch it nobody had to tell you don't go to mcdonald's your body told you don't go to mcdonald's because you treated your body a particular way for two weeks and now your body is craving more of what makes your body feel good yeah. come here somebody who is trying to get between verses 18 19 and 20 and trying to move over to verses 21 and 22 I'm here to let you know if you're focusing on what not to do you're doing it wrong yeah. somebody write that in the comments for me Pastor Gabby said if you're focusing on what not to do, you're doing it wrong. Say it one more time, people in the back. If you're focusing on what not to do, you're doing it wrong. And can I tell you, that's how black church tends to do it. Yeah. I ain't got no help in the sanctuary. Uh, uh, the reason why most people leave the black church is because the black church focuses most of our time on what people are doing incorrectly. We spend so little time on the benefits of getting it right. We spend so little time on what happens when you just steal yourself in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We spend all our time trying to get people to get right before they can come to God, not recognizing that the real way that the Spirit draws is, draw, is spend time with the Spirit, and the Spirit will begin to correct the other stuff in the earlier verses that you thought you couldn't live without. If you started with the stuff you can't do, if you got a list of stuff that you're not allowed to do, you're dealing with the law. Hear me. If you're sitting here with a long checklist, I can't do this because I'm a Christian. I can't do that because I'm a Christian. No, I can't do that because I'm a Christian. I can't do that because I'm a Christian. You're dealing with the law. But when you deal in the spirit, you recognize what is available to you, which literally makes you a better person. And watch it changes your appetite. Church is in the appetite changing business. <laughs> Feel this thing. Church is in the appetite changing business. We just like that vegan juice bar on your corner. We, we, we just trying to give you some smoothies. We, we just trying to help you get a little cleanse every now and again. Church is in the appetite changing business. I'm not invested in what you've been eating before you come here. I'm invested in the diet you choose based on being connected to God under the covering of this ministry. 
you're focusing on what not to do, you're doing it wrong. So all month, we're going to be journeying through the fruits of the Spirit. But the first fruit of the Spirit we're going to deal with today is long suffering, also known in other translations as patience. But I use long suffering intentionally because long suffering is different from patience. Right? We, we, we got categories in our mind. I've been patient. Lord, I've been patient. I'm, I'm ready for my next because I've been patient. We got, we got different conditions for, for patience. But long suffering sounds a little different. It's a little different. When, when you've been suffering a long time, it, it hits a little different than your willingness to be patient. So the King James translation of this text, long suffering, I believe is an important adage for us to deal with. Because you're probably like, Pastor Gabby, how are we going to be in winning season if we in long suffering season? I'm so glad you asked. Let me first surface my own theological declaration. I am a black woman womanist preacher, which means I don't glorify suffering, okay? I don't need to learn the hard way. If you know the fastest way to the thing that God has for me, guess what? I don't need to be in all this struggle fest. I ain't got to be down there. You just show me the way. I'm going to give you credit. I'm going over there, okay? I don't glorify suffering. I don't believe that the only way that God can speak to us is through suffering. I am not one who subscribes to unnecessary suffering. Suffering. But we just came out of a teaching on the book of Job. What I recognize and what I know through my own life is that every now and again, on your way to your winning season, you got to suffer a while. Every now and again, on your way to your winning season, you got to be like Coco Golf, keeping track of the folks who don't believe you're going to get further than where you are right now. Every now and again, you got to be like Issa Rae said. She said, I love it when folks tell me no, because when they tell me no, it creates new possibility models where I recognize y'all don't think I'm going to get it done this way, so I'm going to have to get it done that way. Every once in a while, on your way to your winning season, you've got to learn how to endure conditions you did not ask for. That's why we say every overnight success is usually about 10 years in the making. Everybody who has a real win, a win that is a big quantifiable win where there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it, that's a win right there. If you ask the champion about their story, almost all of them will have a story of long suffering. So Pastor Gabby, how is it that we're dealing with long suffering in its winning season? I'm so glad you asked. We're dealing with that because the folks who don't win are usually the people who quit in the middle of their suffering. I'll say it again. The people who don't make it to winning season are typically the folks who quit in their season of long suffering. One more time, because I just feel like we got to seal this thing. Uh, uh, the folks who typically don't make it to winning season are those who quit when long suffering was required. Sometimes you got to have some stick to itiveness. That's what the old folks would say. Sometimes you got to be able to hold your craft in season and out of season. Sometimes you got to just show up even when you're not sure of what you're going to meet on the other end. Sometimes you got to wake up at 4 a.m. and go practice before the rest of your team gets there like the Mamba mentality of Kobe Bryant or the work ethic of a LeBron James. Sometimes you got to make sure that you're shooting so many baskets like a Michael Jordan that your average is higher because you've just shot more and so because you've shot so many baskets on average you make more baskets because you shoot more times you know, we love to say in the culture shoot your shot the, the reality is if you are not willing to keep shooting then you will have more misses than wins do you know that most people who win is on the other side of unquantifiable losses I wish that when we sat down with our heroes and our sheroes, that the conversations we had were about their losses and not their wins. I mean, somebody needs to make a series about that because I'm here to tell you, we know the wins, but the losses will bless you. The losses come through long suffering. The losses come through patience. The losses come through faithfulness. And watch it. Long suffering is a fruit of the spirit against which there is no law. Amen. 
So, so the spirit builds up in you your ability to bounce back every time you get a no. And, and the spirit speaks back into you that your call is still your call, even when your phone is not ringing for you to get called to do your work. And the spirit speaks back into you that God's promises are yea and amen. And if God said it, that settles it. I believe it. And that's enough. The spirit produces. Produces in you an odd kind of peace without under, without understanding, where you don't understand at all. But you've got peace that surpasses all understanding, where you know that you will trust in the Lord and lean not to your own. Und- it is the spirit that produces your capacity to hang on in there for a long time until you reach winning season. Long-suffering, fruit of the Spirit. And y'all, here's what I want you to jot down in your notes in winning season. Winners who go through a period of long-suffering, number one, point number one, understand the phases of their lives. Phases, P-H-A-S-E-S. Winners we're talking about sports again, understand what it means to be in their rookie season. Winners understand what it looks like when they're being scouted, when they've got to prove themselves because folks don't yet know about their own capacity. Winners understand when you got to pull all-nighters and when you may have launched a business but folks don't know about you yet and so you got to work overtime to get the same impressions as your competitors who have been established for the last decade. Winners understand the phases of their lives and when you spend time with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will remind you of where you are in your winning journey. Holy Spirit will confirm to you, no, everything I told you is going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet. Uh, Sometimes you got to get the confidence of a yet in your long suffering season. What I know God has shown me just has not happened yet. Oh my, yet will preach if we let it. Because when you're in a season of long suffering, we still do not grieve like people with no hope. When you're in a season of long suffering, there is a yet deep down on the inside of you that comes from the revelation that the Holy Spirit reveals to you when you spend time in his presence and that's what builds the fruit of long suffering because I know that it hasn't happened yet I know they haven't said yes yet I know my phone hasn't rung yet I know the award hasn't come yet I know the people aren't there yet but I will be patient in this season because I understand that the spirit is developing in me the kind of patience against which there is no law that's how God can redeem the time because your patience goes beyond reason that's how you can be out of the age category you think you need to be in to hit a milestone in life because when you walk in the fruit of the spirit ain't no law that can stop you but the divine provision of the Holy Spirit Spirit will cause you to walk into new seasons that you never thought were possible. The divine prompting of the Holy Spirit on the backside of long suffering will make sure that everything that God called you to, you will do. You might be 10 years older than everybody else in your space, but the Spirit will develop in you long suffering with a yet in your spirit that whenever it happens it's gonna be when God decides it's the best time for me in your season of winning you must understand your phases the next thing and I'm almost up out of here is that winners clock their records winners clock their records winners know how long each thing takes
stakes winners know that even if I don't qualify for a medal I'm 30 seconds faster this time than I was last time in your winning season and developing long suffering clock your record cause last time your patience lasted about a month but this time your patience can last a year in your winning season clock your record that God is slowly developing in you patience that only comes from the yet in your spirit that comes from spending time with the Lord so winners understand their phases winners clock their record but winners and I'm about it here but winners raise their trophy when God does something good for you you ought to raise your trophy put it high above your head to signify the Lord has done a miraculous thing the Lord has done a great thing I will not hide it under a bushel but in my winning season I raise my trophy above my head and give honor where honor's due give glory where glory's due because God developed in me patience long suffering gave me a yet deep in my belly help me to understand what phase I'm in taught me to clock my own record showed me the progress I made along the way so now in my winning season I raise my trophy so people can see the wins that God has done on the other side of your struggle is your trophy on the other side of your patience is your trophy so double up in our winning season raise our trophy raise our praise raise our gratitude raise raise our praise cause now we're in winning season all I do is win cause now we're in season all I do is win 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 no matter what cause God developed long suffering in me all I do is win 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 no matter what and when God's people see the win all they can do is throw their hands up and say yeah 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 it's winning season raise your trophy it's winning season God produced in you patience that allowed for you to raise your trophy and let the people know this win is God's win this trust went only to the Lord. This yet came from my time in the spirit. So I will forever, ever, 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 ever spend time in God's presence so I can develop God's fruits in every season of my life. Come on, somebody clap your hands and celebrate the Lord right here. Come on and celebrate the author of your winning season. Come on and celebrate the testimonies. Come on and celebrate the yeses. Come on and celebrate the victories. It's winning season. 
And the reason why I want you to raise your trophy in winning season, because people have seen the people of God suffer. They need to see the people of God win. And so when we raise our trophy, because it's on the backside of long suffering, we got a different kind of thank you, Jesus. I told y'all last week, Job had a different kind of appreciation for what God had given him on the other side of a season of suffering. I don't believe that suffering is the only way we get to that level of gratitude. But when you have to suffer, and you understand your phases, clock your record, you ought to raise your trophy. Shout from the rooftops what God has done. I would have fainted if I did not believe I would live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's from the psalmist. When you get on the other side of your suffering long, you raise your trophy. That's why so many times in the Old Testament, when God did a thing, the prophets would go and build an altar. Here lies my Ebenezer. They, they would go and, and, and mark the ground. They, they would go and collect the stones from the river. They, they would go and do something that was equivalent to raising their trophy so that the people would know you have won again. Come on. Come on. We, we raise our trophies so the people will know God did it again. We raise our trophies so people know that faithfulness and goodness and, and kindness and patience and, and love and joy can still win again. We, we raise our trophies so people know that God has not forgotten about God's most dedicated servants. God has won again. You won again, Lord. You've won again. It's winning season. It is winning season. Y'all, we are in a season of wins on the back end of what the Lord is producing in our time in the spirit. Amen. So I want to encourage you, encourage you, encourage you, encourage you. In this winning season, we're here. It's not coming. It's here. Hear this. Hear the declaration of the Lord. We are not going into a winning season. We are in a winning season. Okay? We're not walking into it. We're already there. God is not promising it. We're in the promise. And so in this winning season, raise your trophy high and declare that the Lord has won again. That's why we say hallelujah. Woo! That's why we say thank you, Jesus, because you brought us a mighty long way. Ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right there, Malik. Somebody celebrate the Lord right here. You. 